What the heck is XML editing? XML is short for Extensible Markup Language and is fairly common in the programming world. Every component used to build in Stormworks is defined with code saved in XML. And we can modify some of this code to stretch most of the components in interesting ways. Some parts even allow us to change other values like the size and grip of a wheel or the amount of fuel in a rocket booster, essentially letting us create incredibly heavy or weightless parts. First you need to locate your vehicles folder. On Windows you can open the run app and type percent app data percent backslash stormworks backslash data backslash vehicles. And for Mac users navigate to library slash application support slash stormworks slash data slash vehicles. Make a shortcut or pin the folder location because you'll be back here a lot and if you haven't already under the view tab make sure this checkbox on hidden items is selected so you can see the app data folder later. You can see these files have the .xml format after the vehicle name. We need a way to edit these files. Notepad or any basic text editor would work but it's a lot more difficult to use and you get some very useful features with a proper code editor. I recommend using Visual Studio Code, so if you don't already have a code editor, follow this link, download and install Visual Studio Code. Pause the video here while you go get that sorted. After installing Visual Studio Code, click on the extensions button in the left panel. In the search bar type XML. This will give you a list of extensions that can make editing XML a lot easier. I use the extension called XML by Red Hat. The main reason I use this is it lets me quickly unminify the XML so I can read it more easily and I recommend you get this extension. Now open Stormworks and get into the vehicle editor. To start we're only going to edit the default block. Save the default block with a name you can easily find. I'm going to name mine default block. Now back into Visual Studio, we want to add the vehicles folder to Visual Studio's file explorer. Click the explorer tab in the left panel then the open folder button and navigate to your vehicles folder. On Windows, navigate to the users folder, which is most easily done by clicking the C drive, then users and into your user folder. Navigate into app data, roaming, stormworks, data, vehicles, and click select folder. Now this folder is saved in Visual Studio and you get this big list of every vehicle you've saved on your computer. Workshop vehicles are not saved in this location. Scroll through the list and find the default block we saved earlier. When you open the vehicle file, it will be minified to save space. To unminify, using the XML extension, press left shift plus left alt plus F at the same time. The file will be unminified and your cursor is often placed at the bottom, so make sure to scroll up after doing this. We're looking for the components list and inside we have the one block. Components are all the parts you can place in the editor. The C tag is an individual component Inside the O tag, there is an R equals with a bunch of numbers. This is the secret source. By changing these values, you can stretch and twist almost any component. There will be three values with a number one, possibly negative, and the rest of the numbers will be zero. If a number is negative, don't remove the negative symbol as this will invert the component. Because you can rotate your components around in the editor, it's almost always a gamble which numbers are gonna be the ones you wanna change. Change the first number one to three. This will stretch the block to be visually three blocks long. Now save this file in Visual Studio. Go back to Stormworks and load your default block vehicle. Change your color to yellow and place a block on the side of your stretched default block. Here we can see some clipping because the default block's hitbox hasn't been changed. This can cause what's known as Z fighting where two faces are sharing the same space and fighting to be on top. While yellow is still our selected colour, place a 3x suspension wheel on the side of the default block, then save over the file. Switch back into Visual Studio and your file has minified itself again. This is because Stormworks has modified the file when you added and saved the wheel component. Press left shift plus left alt plus F to unminify. Here we have the stretched block but also a new wheel component below it. The most recent component to be placed will often be at the bottom of the vehicle file, although components will also be grouped into subgrids. If this file were a much larger vehicle, changing the colour of the component you wanted to modify lets you use the search function to find the colour. 
In this case, yellow has a hex code of FFE727, and you can press left control plus F to open the search and type in the hex code FFE727, which will highlight that component. Some parts are named, like the Wheel Advance 3 SUS, which can also make them easy to find. A 5x wheel, for example, would be Wheel Advanced 5 SUS, and a 5x non suspension wheel would be Wheel Advanced 5. Not all XML values are exposed in the files by default. You can see here this wheel has no values for grip, damping and wheel size, even though these are settings we can change. Go back into the vehicle editor and select the wheel. To make the values appear in the vehicle file, change the sliders in the vehicle editor to something that isn't the default value. I'm going to drag all of them to the left side changing the values down to 1% which will expose them all in the vehicle file. Save the default block and head back to Visual Studio. Now let's go over the code for the wheel. The C tag is the component. R is the rotation values, which are used to stretch and skew. BC is the base color. AC is additive color. And SC is the separate face colors. You'll find these values on most, if not all, components. The labels and numbers following this are specific to the wheel. Grip factor is often raised beyond one to increase grip to a more useful amount. Stiffness factor, damping factor, and tire pressure are less modified, but important if you really want to tune your vehicle's suspension. And wheel size will let you increase or decrease the size of the wheel. Continuing on, the VP tag is the position of the component in the vehicle editor. The default block has a position of 0x, 0y, and 0z, but any zeros won't be written out here. The wheel, however, has a Z value of negative 1, which means it has travelled along the Z axis in the vehicle editor one block space backwards relative to the arrow on the floor of the editor. Change the wheel size to wheel underscore size equals quote 3 quote and save the file. Open the default block file in the vehicle editor. Place a 5x suspension wheel beside it and you'll see the difference. By using these 3x wheels at a scaled up size we can have a smaller suspension and a shorter axle. Mess around with the R values and save components you have stretched and skewed so you can paste them onto new vehicles later. It's a good idea to keep a normal unmodified block attached to the component you're modifying as some XML parts don't want to merge back into other subgrids, but a normal block will. That's most of what you need to know to get going. I'll see you later, thanks for watching.